in June 2011, the structures and artifacts of Hiraizumi in Iwate Prefecture were collectively declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The jewel in this crown is the Buddhist temple Chusonji. Its gleaming golden Konjikido worship hall was one of Japan's first official national treasures. The Chusonji complex encompasses many buildings and examples of arts and crafts from nearly 1,000 years ago. These precious cultural treasures have been carefully preserved with the help of occasional restorations by Japan's foremost artisans. In 2011, the young man began his novitiate, the first step on the path to joining the long line of monks who have served the temple for the last 1,200 years. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is the Buddhist temple Chusonji. We explore the treasures that have recently earned Chusonji recognition as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and meet the people who preserve the temple's long-standing traditions. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. I'm in Chusonji, which is a Buddhist temple in the town of Hiraizumi in Iwate Prefecture. And this part of the approach to the temple is called Tsukimizaka, or Moon Viewing Hill. And it's lined with 350-year-old Japanese cedar trees. You really get a feel for the passage of time walking up here. As you can see, there's quite a lot of tourists around, even though it's a weekday today. And I'm sure part of that, at least, is due to the recent UNESCO listing. Iwate Prefecture suffered massive damage in the earthquake and tsunami that struck the northeastern part of Japan this March. And the news that Hiraizumi had been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site did a lot to raise the spirits of the people who are trying to get this region back on its feet. Let's start off with a look at what it is that makes Chusonji quite so special. The town of Hiraizumi in Iwate Prefecture has a beautiful bucolic setting. The news that Hiraizumi's treasures had been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site brought a stir to this quiet community. I'm eager to welcome a lot of tourists. I hope this will help tourism to bounce back all around Tohoku. Hiraizumi was the stronghold of three generations of the northern Fujiwara clan, Kiyohira, Motohira and Hidehira. They held sway in northeast Japan, an area now known as Tohoku, for most of the 12th century. Under their guidance, a temple complex was built that eclipsed even the magnificence of Kyoto, in a big city with a population of around 100,000. It is the temples and gardens built by the Fujiwaras that have won recognition as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Foremost among them is the Buddhist temple Chusonji, erected by the first generation lord, Fujiwara no Kiyohira. It consists of the main temple and 17 affiliated sub-temples. The history of Chusonji can be traced back to its founding in the 9th century by Enning, a high priest of the Tendai school of Buddhism. At the start of the 12th century, under the rule of Kiyohira, 40 pagodas, worship halls and other structures were built to transform it into a leading Buddhist temple. In those days, there was incessant warfare between powerful clans in northern Japan. Families were often divided as relatives fought and killed each other. Kiyohira brought an end to this period of turmoil. Then he established Chusonji as a place to pray for those who had fallen in battle, friend or foe. His wish was that they would all enter the Pure Land. The Pure Land is a Buddhist paradise, free of all worldly desires and defilement. The ultimate expression of that concept is Konjikido. This hall is situated inside an outer structure that offers protection from the elements. Konjikido was built in the year 1124. 
It's a small square worship hall, 5.5 meters per side. The walls, the ceiling, the columns, everything is covered in gold leaf. This glimmering vision is said to represent the pure land. Such lavish use of gold was possible because at the time, Hiraizumi was one of the world's foremost gold-producing regions. In the center of Konjikido is a representation of Amida Buddha, who leads souls to the pure land. This wooden statue is a complex assembly of pieces of carved cypress. It's notable for its graceful lines and the tranquil contentment of the Buddha's expression. Amida Buddha is surrounded by bodhisattvas and Buddhist guardian deities. The dais for the Buddhist statues contains the remains of the three Fujiwara lords. To the left is the second lord, Motohira. In the center is the first lord, Kiyohira. And on the right is the third lord, Hidehira. Konjigido also serves as a memorial to a family that sought to recreate the pure land in Hiraizumi. For 900 years, Chusonji has been a source of spiritual comfort to people in Tohoku. On March the 11th, 2011, the region was struck by a devastating earthquake and tsunami that killed tens of thousands. Chusonji largely escaped damage, and the temple soon got involved in sending relief supplies to disaster-hit areas, as well as conducting memorial services for people who had died. The news that Hiraizumi had been added to the list of World Heritage Sites represented a ray of hope for the people in Tohoku who were working tirelessly for the region's recovery. Marco Polo mentioned Japan, a place where gold was apparently limitless. Some people think he might have been referring to stories about Konjiki-do. If you've just seen a temple that was covered in gold, you too might think that Japan was a land with unlimited gold. But why was gold such an important color? In fact, there's a Buddhist sutra which speaks of the pure land as being a place flowing with golden light. The name Chusonji sounds like a single temple, but in fact that's not the case. There are many temple halls within the precinct here, as you can see from this illustration, and the famous Konjiki door here is just one of them. In fact, there were a lot more when this precinct was originally built about a thousand years ago, but a lot of them got burnt down in a wildfire in the 14th century, and the current Chusonji complex mainly consists of buildings that were rebuilt in the 17th century. Behind me here is the main worship hall where many Buddhist rites and ceremonies are held, and this too is a reconstruction. Although many structures were lost to fire, numerous works of Buddhist art from the 12th century have miraculously survived. Next we'll take a look at the elaborate aesthetics of ancient Japan. Konjikido is Japan's greatest showcase of the most refined decorative arts from the 12th century. Each dais in Konjikido features metalwork in the shape of peacocks, birds believed to dwell in the pure land. Every line of every feather is exquisitely defined. The beams and columns are replete with turban shell inlaid lacquer work. Every inch of the temple's interior gleams.
130 months. This is called Buddhist Paradise with Golden Pagoda. Look closely and you can see golden calligraphy within the picture. It's the text of an entire volume of sutras. Every element of the picture, right down to the roof tiles, is composed exclusively of written words. Around the pagoda are paintings that illustrate the content of the sutra text. This astonishingly detailed work reflects profound devotion to the teachings of Buddhism. Each of the sutras and paintings at Chusonji embodies the wish of the Fujiwaras to establish the pure land in this world. I can't say I'm a great fan of the lavish use of gold, but the Konjiki door is surprisingly tasteful in the way it's decorated. It's kind of like a, a work of art with the proportions of a small building. So it's only understandable that another building would be constructed to house it. And this construction here is the old wooden hall, which was uh, built in the 15th century and for 500 years housed and protected the Konjiki door. Because it was designed to have a protective function, the construction itself is very simple. But over the years, it's aged rather attractively, don't you think? If you look inside now, it's completely vacant. And over here behind me is the new enclosure hall, which is made of ferro-concrete and currently houses the Konjiki door. The change from a wooden enclosure to a concrete one happened during a mass post-war restoration drive. Let's take a look now at how the modern artisans tried to match up to the exquisite artistry of their ancient forebears. Konjikido is considered the magnum opus of Japanese architecture of the 12th century. But 50 years ago, it underwent a massive restoration. In the 1940s, Konjiki-do had fallen into a perilous state. Hiraizumi had been struck by a series of powerful typhoons. The strong winds felled trees that toppled directly onto Konjiki-do. And massive beams of the old wooden enclosing hall collapsed onto the roof of Konjiki-do. Inside, 90% of the original gold leaf of the ceiling and walls had flaked off and the columns were riddled with cracks. The temple lacked the resources to restore it. In response to this grave danger, leading traditional artisans from across Japan came forward. Shrine carpenters, lacquer artists, metal workers, 50 of the nation's most famous craftsmen assembled. The Great Restoration began in 1962. But there were three major challenges that had to be overcome. First, the conspicuously damaged inlay work. Experts determined that at least 500 great green turban shells would be needed. The question was how to obtain such a large supply from the South Seas. The solution came from Okinawa, at the time still under US rule. The Ryukyu Islands government arranged for Okinawan fishermen to dive for the turbot shells. They went down 40 meters to collect the huge shells, each one at least 20 centimeters across. The second problem was the lacquer used on the columns. The images of bodhisattvas on the columns were of gold dust inlay in black lacquer, whose unique deep black hue offered a striking contrast. How could this black hue be reproduced? 
Disassembled pieces of Konjiki-do were taken to the National Research Institute for Cultural Properties in Tokyo for a careful analysis of the lacquer's chemical composition. The formula itself proved almost identical to modern lacquer. The secret lay in the way the lacquer was applied. Restorers determined that it had been applied in four layers, each much thinner than typical lacquering, just a hundredth of a millimeter thick. Artisans quickly set to work on decorating the columns. They came up with a method to apply the lacquer thinly. The way lacquer spreads varies with humidity. Restorers studied the climate of Hiraizumi 900 years ago and set things up in their workspace to replicate the ancient humidity levels as the work was performed. 20 days later, the lacquering was finished. The results? A perfect recreation of the deep black of long ago, throwing the gold into high contrast. The third challenge was the gold leaf covering the entire interior of the hall. The gold leaf used in Konjiki-do was strangely pale. A careful analysis of the chemical composition was made. The results showed an unusually large amount of silver mixed in to create the unique pale hue. Matching gold leaf was immediately produced. The restorers replicated the ancient method of applying the gold leaf, with the sheet edges slightly overlapping and small, deliberate irregularities in the surface. 30,000 sheets of gold leaf were used, and the work took eight months. Once the gold leaf had been applied, the pale cast of the gold and the bumps on the surface reflected the light to produce a sensational shimmer. In 1968, after six years of work, the massive restoration project was completed. Konjikido was once again a radiant vision of the pure land. Seeing all of that really gives you an appreciation for the amazing quality of the handiwork of those artisans a thousand years ago. Apparently many of those artifacts are almost impossible to replicate these days. And with this new enclosure hall here now, the treasures of Chusanji are said to be safe for another thousand years without any further need of restoration. Many people have been involved in maintaining the traditions of Chusanji, but most important are the monks. And next we're going to take a look at the journey of a young man embarking on his novitiate to become a monk at Chusanji. Chusanji boasts a 1,200-year history. Its pure land traditions have been maintained and passed on by each generation of the Buddhist clergy. The position of chief priest at each of the 17 sub-temples of Chusonji is hereditary. This is based on a belief that teachings can best be preserved and passed on through blood ties. Children born into these temple families undergo training for 21 years, starting at the age of 13. This year, Enryo Sasaki, age 13, will embark on his training. Enryo was born into the head priest lineage of Jizoi, one of the 17 sub-temples. He will follow in the footsteps of his father, grandfather and ancestors to become the 40th head priest of his line. It seems tough. I'll have to read the sutras, get up early in the morning, On New Year's Day of 2011, Enrio begins his novitiate. Monk training begins with two one-week sessions per year in winter and summer. 
First comes the Buddhist service to begin the new year. Right off the bat, Enryo faces a two-hour sutra recitation. Some of the sutras are ones he has never heard before, and he soon gets lost. Even though his father and grandfather had briefed him, everything is still very confusing. Helping him in his training are other trainee monks who have more experience than him. Do it like this. Put it in uh, one of the vessels and then put the lid on it. The arrangement of the implements on the altar and the ritual gestures are all taught by word of mouth. It takes ten years just to learn how to set up for the service. Enrio is still a bewildered beginner. But the older novices look out for him. They will groom him as successor for the next 21 years. While in training, he shares a 20 square metre room with four older novices. They're all committed to a lifelong path of being Chu Sonji monks. Living together builds strong ties that will help them to endure the rigours of the novitiate. The ties we build here will result in lifelong friendships and together we will be serving as monks our whole lives. On the third day of training, Enrio is assigned to beat out the rhythm on a hollow wooden temple block. He must sit on his knees for an hour and a half continuously beating the block. It's an important task because it helps everyone to keep the rhythm of the sutra recitation. After 30 minutes, Enryo is looking uncomfortable. He's not used to sitting on his knees and his legs are going numb. But if he stops now, he will disrupt the rhythm of the recitation. The older novices are ready to take over for him if he says he can't take it anymore. Now the recitation is nearing its end. Although dazed by the cold and fatigue, Enrio manages to keep beating away for the full 90 minutes. It was shaky, but you kept going. I kept wriggling around. It was the toughest thing I've had to do so far. <laughs> With the older novices watching over him, Enrio made it through his first session of monk training. Seven months later, Enrio has returned for the summer training session. Immediately, he's given the task of making prayer slips, which will be given to all the temples in the Chusonji complex to wish for their peace and prosperity. The bitter cold of winter was tough, but so is the sweltering heat of summer, with the temperature rising above 30 degrees Celsius. As he begins his second training session, Enrio looks more comfortable than before. And having experienced the devastating earthquake in March, he feels differently about his training than he did before. People in the affected areas are emotionally scarred. I don't know how much I can do as a training monk, but by praying, 
and doing whatever else I can, I hope to be of some help to them. Chusonji was built to be a symbol of the pure land here in the mortal world. And as we have seen, the commitment to fulfill that vision is passed down from one generation to the next. This flower is called the Chusonji lotus, but it's no ordinary lotus flower. This one was revived after an 800-year slumber. In 1950, some caskets belonging to the ancient Fujiwara lords were opened when they were found in the Konjiki door, and out of one of them came 80 lotus seeds. These seeds were given to botanical researchers in the hope that they could try to get them to flower. And finally, in 1998, they succeeded in creating some rather beautiful blossoms. Pretty epic story, really. This little garden here is closed off to the tourists, but as we've seen, there are thousands and thousands of tourists here at Chusonji. And it's nice to see at least one success story in this northeastern part of Japan, which was so tragically hit with disaster earlier this year. I'll see you again next time. Next time, fishing. 10 million people in Japan are said to enjoy fishing. We take a look at the typically Japanese features of fishing, including incredibly lifelike bait.